Hello you guys and welcome. This is Dr. Andrew Jones. Welcome to today's webcast. I'm hoping it's working now. I'm going to go on YouTube and hopefully see myself. For, first, thanks for being here you guys. Thanks for your patience. Uh, we tried to have this webcast. I tried to have it go up earlier and there's an issue around the software and what was communicating, what not. Just gonna go on to my channel. So before I get any further, I just first want to make sure that I am on live. It says I'm alive now, which is awesome. So I'm hoping you're seeing me. I'm going to get on to the camera here so I can see exactly what you're seeing. There I am. Here is Tula. So first, thanks. Thanks for your patience if you tried to get on earlier. Secondly, thanks for being a subscriber. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. The big part of today why I wanted to do this as a live broadcast is we're about to reach 100,000 subscribers. I think we're about 100 away, which, which is crazy and awesome, and I'm just mm. super grateful. And Tula's even super happy, too. Oh, all right. Um, years ago, when we first started, I'm just going to, my brother just sent me a text. I think he's saying, I'm hoping he's saying it's working. I'm just going to get on my glasses quickly, check the phone to make sure sure he's hearing me i think he says good yay that's awesome we're live so a couple of things first of all i never imagined when we first put up the video first video about five years ago that we would ever reach anything like that i mean i think forever there's always you know even less than a thousand subscribers and slowly it's built i've been able to become more creative i really enjoy making these videos i've had tons of feedback from you guys in terms of what works what doesn't work um, specifics around video ideas, around you know, like, can you cover this topic or not, and then also even just critiques around making these videos easier for you to learn and just more engaging, more entertaining. So thanks. What I wanted to do though in today's video, and partly using the little tool here, is go over some really simple veterinary hacks, things that I would have used in veterinary practice that you guys can be really, I think, quickly and easily using at home that may make a difference in helping you treat your pet at home, potentially avoid uh, avoid seeing the veterinarian for some of these simple and easy mm. things. So let's get right into the video. Dual is tired and hungry. So the first thing we started making up earlier is making your own pill pockets at home. Um, in some guys, such as my brother's animals, he's got some animals with worms, it can be hard to give them pills. So it's nice if you can disguise it in something tasty. You don't necessarily need to rush off to the pet store or your vet clinic and get these little pill pockets where you hide the pills in. You can make your own pill pocket at home. So this here is a combination of, I've got one tablespoon of peanut butter, yummy peanut butter. I've got an equivalent tablespoon of actually got gluten-free flour, kind of mixed in. And then what I did is I just added in a little bit of milk, it could be any type of fluid, a little bit of milk just to, so I can mix it up, a bit of fluid started to dry out on me here. So you guys should be able to see it there. We're gonna try it on Tula. And I also added in a little bit of this. This is my supplement, Ultimate Canine Advanced Health Formula. So it's making it extra, a little bit extra tasty, also much more nutritious. So here is our little mini pill pockets. I just wanna show you what it would look like. So it's just like a, you know, it's almost like a little peanut butter ball or a little peanut butter cookie. So as you can imagine, say Tula needs to get a pill, it's her for you to give it to her. Mmm, let's see, will she eat the peanut butter? And Tula's kind of fussy. <gasps> Good girl. Mmm, so there it is. Quick and easy little pill pockets. Thank you, Tula. I wrote all this stuff down, so I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. The next thing is a sort of your simple, easy, homemade flea shampoo. Um, while I was in vet practice, we also had, adjacent to the clinic, we had an animal shelter. And often we get these young, young little kittens in. They're far too young to treat with any of the topical um, flea and tick medications. But some of those topical flea meds, you know, such as Advantage, etc. Um, but they'd be covered in fleas, these poor, little, these poor little kittens. And one of the things we found that worked really well with just a dish soap recipe. So I wanted to show you a simple one you could consider using at home. And this one here, what you would use is, let's start out with, Apple cider vinegar, which I've got here. So we're gonna use a quarter, I'm gonna make it up so you can see it. It's a quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar. There it is there. Don't envy drinking this, Tula. 
then a quarter of a cup of the dish soap. And this is something where you're going to make up, primarily you're either applying because you want to make your own flea shampoo, or secondly, you've got a really young animal, a young puppy, a young kitten, too young to be putting on these topicals. So we've got a quarter cup of that dish soap, and then we're doing 50%, so two parts water. There we got it. And there it is. And that's it. You can just take that. I'm just going to mix it up here. I'm just going to grab myself a spoon. You know it's live when I'm le leaving the camera. Ah, perfect. I have a spoon. And what we would do is you just, you're going to mix that up as a shampoo. Lather up your puppy, your kitten, whatever you have. And you want to make sure you leave it on for a full 10 minutes. And it did a really good job. We'd leave it on. We'd rinse these little kittens off. And you'd see all the fleas falling off, essentially dead. Um, which, it's so, much, it's so much worse for them, honestly, to have fleas that are turning them into anemic, potentially transmitting disease. And I, that was quite effective, surprisingly. And it's not meant to be something long-term. If you're going to be repeatedly using it, you want, well, you want to make sure you're going to follow up with some type of conditioner. Because especially this soap is quite drying. It's going to dry out your dog or your kitten skin. But it's a real simple, easy to make at home. Homemade flea shampoo. There, that's my second hack. So let's get on to hack number three, little Tula. So this one would be, say for instance, you've got a dog that's sort of lacerated his or her pad, such as little Tula might have here. You might have a kitten. I'm gonna look for my thing here. Um, you might have a cat who's got a similar cut. And pads are a good example because often I would have clients come into the vet clinic and I'd look at their dog's pad and yes, there's a lacerate, laceration. Yes, we could look at anesthesia, general anesthesia maybe, I'm trying to suture that thing up. I mean, it might cost you upwards of $500 to $1,000 to have that done. But at the same point, many of the, it's really difficult to keep these pads closed. It could be really difficult, and more often than not, it seemed to be like half the time the stitches would come out that frustrated owner saying, why did I spend all this money in the first place? Great question. But one of the things we would often use, in, I would often use in practice and discuss with many of the clients about, is if they had this. So this here is it's actually a Mexican crazy glue, and you're going to have it. So it's some type of rapid gluing product, and I'm not going to do it on Tula. But what we would do, so this can be done to a wound on the skin, for instance. Um, it can be done just on the pad. So you just you're going to spread, clean the pad first if there's a cut in it or any type of laceration. Make sure it's dry. So use, use a cloth, a dry cloth to make sure it's dry. And then I just put two or three drops directly on the edge, on either edge of the skin, and the edge of that pad. Make sure my hand's not touching it, hold it together. Then about three to five seconds, that's pretty much closed in. Then after I'd follow up with the bandage. There it is, that's hack number three. You'd be surprised how often this got used in vet practice. Worked really well for some of those cuts, for sure. And I'm surprised how quickly it worked. The other, another tip would be I've had more than a number would have clients come in and we even have, for instance, their dogs, sometimes even a cat has caught, caught their a nail so, and they ripped part of the nail out. Once again, they've got this area that won't stop bleeding. And even sometimes an emergency at the clinic, I even use this, this crazy glue. So don't discount that. So that's our hack number three. Right, Tula, let's get into hack number four. This is an interesting one. So many of you are gonna have some of these dogs that get some pretty nasty mats. Oh, Tula's trying to eat some of our pill pot, our homemade pill pockets again. And you're kind of wondering, is there something you can do to get out those mats? And especially when they really get stuck next to your dog fur and it'd be really, really uncomfortable, especially getting in there, trying to, you know, comb them out, um, as you can imagine. So one of the things I actually had um, was reading in from a client who, a pet owner who had sort of made a suggestion, was the use of um, baby powder. But what, what you're doing with that is the main thing it's doing, it's sort of drying out some of the moisture, it's helping kind of break down and loosen up, you know, that knotted mat, making it easier to comb it out. Another option to use instead of baby powder, um, you could consider using something such as cornstarch, who are trying to loosen up the, that matted hair which is bound together, absorb some of the moisture because that's what's keeping the hair matted in the first place. So then you could cope it out, comb it out. So what I have here, this one here, I think you guys can see, it's called diatomaceous earth. 
Kilo likes that. Just a fine white powder, kind of looks similar to flour, looks similar to cornstarch. And it's just a mineral. Now it it's found where sort of the exoskeletons of little microscopic plankton in areas where there used to be ocean, and now it's left. It's just a sedimentary sort of rock that comes into this flower. So you could use that and imagine little Tula. Tula actually gets mats. She's well, actually there's a little one on her head now. Let's try it out. So I don't, I'm going to turn her all white, and that's you know it's live video in. There you go, Tula. So you're getting all matted up. So the idea is you're going to apply that topically, and we're going to try to dry up some of that mat, maybe loosen up those hair follicles, make it easier to comb it out. So let's just see. Now that I've put on my Dow to make this earth, the big thing with using using this, it's one that I talk about using for natural flea, flea and tick control. It can be used topically. It's safe to get put on your dog. It's safe to put on your cats. It can also be taken orally. So you want to make sure it's one that's considered food grade, safe for people. That's meaning it's safe for your pets. Um, but we're in this case, we're using it to help with mats. So we're going to let it sit there for a little bit, absorb some of that moisture. I would say somewhere between five and 10 minutes. And then let's just get her comb and let's see if I can comb Tula's little matted head out. Well, it doesn't seem easier. There, Tula. Just even running the comb through her fur is a bit easier. Huh. Okay, well, there's our, I think that's hack number four. Dow Tomatious Earth for dog mats. Good girl, Tula. Alrighty. And you're now extra dusty, but you're also going to be parasite free, which is what I want. Okay, hack number five. Let's talk about bad breath. There's a number of different reasons why our animals can have bad breath. The most obvious thing is you're going to have gum disease, you're going to have plaque, which is built into tartar, which is causing it. But some, some pets just do. That's just the way it is, just like some people. So a couple other things you consider. One is this coconut oil. It's naturally antibacterial. It's also got a whole array of different beneficial properties, uh, such as being helpful for, for our animals, that we need to increase metabolic weight, potentially help them lose weight, um, potentially helpful for our animals that have seizures. But it's also it's antibacterial, you. So let's just try here. It would be as simple as, so if we're gonna give it to your dog orally, you could do a quite a low amount. You could do about a quarter of a teaspoon for 10 pounds of body weight daily. I'm gonna try it here in Tula and see if she likes it. So you could just mix it into their food. And as you can see, Tula likes it. Mm. So there's coconut oil mixed in. So that may help with our dogs with bad breath. And the other herb that I recently read about was this. And the other suggestion is parsley. Is used for people for bad breath. Um, it seems to also be beneficial for our, our, be our dogs. You're not going to get many cats to consume the parsley. Um, it's also a natural diuretic. And got some other nutrients that make it just a beneficial plant period. So there's our sort of two little simple hacks that you can consider. If you've got a dog that bat, has bad breath, you want to try something quick and easy and natural at home. Are we little tubula? Oh, what's our next one? The next one I don't want to demonstrate, which, well, I would have many clients write in or they come in and like, I've got a puppy that's chewing on everything. Or I have a kitten that's chewing on a cord. Or I have, you know, a dog who's out in the yard and every time he poops, he's eating his poop. It's called coprophagia. And they're like, is there anything natural I can do at home? I would suggest pulling out some of this. This is a hot sauce. So this, so something like that, like a Tabasco, some type of hot sauce. You're trying to make something very aversive and tasting. It's something you're going to have in your house. And, that, and it definitely makes, if you've got a dog that's out there eating your own poop, that definitely makes it aversive. It means, in some cases, it means you've got to go out ahead of time, spice that stuff up so it's there. You do that at night. So he shows up in the morning and he's going to take it and taste it. And like, oh, I'm never going to eat that again. Or maybe it's just putting some of this, this hot sauce on a cloth wiping the cords, for instance, but there's an area where your puppy or a kitten is chewing. But it's real not, and literally, they're gonna take one little lick and it's gonna turn them off right away. Um, so I found many clients found that to be helpful. All right, Tula, here, let's give you another little bit of a pill pocket break. Hmm, okay, little Tula, here's more pill pockets for you. So let's see, what was our next thing? Ha ha, number seven, the use of petroleum jelly. A real common issue can be, you know, a, a cat that has recurring hairballs or hacking and hacking. 
Yes, you can go to the pet supply store. Yes, you can see your veterinarian. Yes, you can get you know, a special hair, hairball remedy. But somewhere here I do have it. Here it is, this plain old petroleum jelly. The, the basis of most of those hairball remedies is this, just plain old Vaseline. You're using, typically you're using about a quarter to half a teaspoon for 10 pounds of body weight daily. So you could do that with your cat. Likewise with their animals, I had someone who talked to me where they had a dog who had eaten, actually eat, like to eat socks. And he'd swallowed the entire sock. I was so concerned, did they go see the veterinarian or not? Their dog had no clinical signs, no vomiting, no diarrhea. And I was related to this after they'd talked to the clinic, the clinic could watch it. And they're wondering, is there anything else they could give to kind of speed the movement through that sock? You bet there is, this, Vaseline. Because it's something that's gonna lubricate the stomach, the intestinal tract, lubricate whatever um, product is in their intestine, such as the sock, help move it out quicker. So for Tula, I would give her a half to a teaspoon, three to four times a day. And if they won't, if you won't swallow it, you just open your mouth, put it on their tongue, and have her take it down. There, Tula. That, fortunately, Tula's pretty good. The only thing she really seems to consume on any type of basis is just get these little burdocks, these little burrs in her fur, and that can cause some issues with her. Last week, I actually used some of the Vaseline just for that. She was really gagging and gagging just because she'd swallowed some of those burrs. Made a big difference for helping her pass those burrs and feel so much better three or four hours later. Okay, Tula, let's get into hack number eight. Uh, what have I got written down? Okay, sometimes I can't even read my, let's see. Uh, homemade something, let's see. Don't you hate that when you've written it down and you're not really sure what you've said? Some type of homemade. It's a, oh, it's a bit of a mystery what I've just went on there. So I'm just gonna go through all the stuff I have here, make sure I've covered everything. So we've got the homemade flea shampoo, we've got something that's gonna help sort of deal with mats and or with the diatomaceous earth. We have the aversive stuff, their Tabasco. We have our homemade coat pockets. I think we've got most things covered. Okay. We've got our coconut oil and our parsley. Aha. Here's the last thing. Now I can read my writing. There's a homemade sling. So I actually read this on, and this suggestion came from a veterinary technician. So one of the things, maybe there's some type of urgent thing where you, for instance, the example would be, say you've had a dog that's had a surgery, they can't bear weight on their rear legs, such as little Tula. Maybe they've had a back surgery, some type of back injury. Often I would talk about you as a client, putting a towel on your knees, you're supporting one side, you're trying to support the other, to try to lift them up, because um, they can put, say for instance, they could put weight on their back leg or their front leg. So they needed support. But one suggestion, they said an easy homemade sling, was just taking a grocery bag. I'm gonna try it here to see if it'll work with Tula. So this is an inexpensive grocery bag. I don't mind sacrificing. So I just cut it down the middle on two sides. Let's see if this works. Because we're gonna try, for, try to make our own little homemade sling for you. And see if you'll let me sling you around. I really like that idea. I like the idea of taking things you might have at your house that are easy to use. Aha, okay. So here's a little sling. So you've got, the thing is you've got handles on either side. Let's see two under here, Tula. I'm not sure this is gonna work, but let's just see if I can mix you up. But so the idea would be maybe you get a bag that's a bit better, but you can see how I can just sort of lift your back legs, for instance. So say she actually has, you now she's had an injury. She needs some support. There's a nice, easy way to support you, Tula. Ha ha. So there's our homemade sling. Then our last, my last big point, which is all part and parcel of what we're discussing, is just you doing this, you becoming an empowered pen owner. Oh, Tula's eating my demonstration stuff. Is I mean, you learning about these array of different home remedies, you learning about sort of basic home veterinary care, you becoming more comfortable with examining your dog or your cat at home, with performing basic veterinary treatments. You know, as simple as you looking in your dog's ears, opening their mouth, looking their teeth, you know, assessing their gum color, handling their paws, being able to you know trim their nails if you need to, but really be able to look and see if there's something going on with your dog, and then applying some of these things. No, it never. It doesn't mean you're never going to see the veterinarian. You're still going to need veterinary care. 
But the difference is that you're you're directing that care. It's not they're your dog, they're your cats, and it's up to you to make those decisions directed. It's not the veterinarian can make suggestions, but ultimately it comes up to you. And I just don't want to leave with that being empowered. So thanks you guys for being on today's webcast. I'm glad that it's finally showing up and you can see me now, which is awesome. Thanks for Tula for being patient and thanks for all your questions, your feedback and your comments. So keep those coming in. And thanks again for being a subscriber. And if you're not a subscriber, I encourage you to click somewhere up there, down there and subscribe. So thanks again, you guys. And I'm gonna be signing out shortly. It's Dr. Jones. I am looking forward to talking to you again really soon.